Welcome everyone to this episode of Behavior Code. I'm your host, Yogi Chris, PhD, founder of Ninth Limb Yoga, and I'm interviewing Jose Rodriguez, real estate Jose from New York. <laughs> he was just out here at Base One, Temple One, area code 408 in San Jose. This is a stoic temple for shape shifting warrior monks. And he came and he got his beads. He resided here for five days. He picked up the routines, got in the rhythm of things, interacted with us all uh, a lot and, you know, very casually and comfortably. And he left a changed man. You'll soon see the 30 minute video, his bead ceremony. There was a whole lecture around it. And uh, it's about to be released on Behavior Code, which is where this podcast is posted. So if you're catching the recording, wherever you're catching it, subscribe. If you're catching it live, share and tune in for a great episode. We got Jose here. Brother, you just returned back to New York, uh, what day is today? Tuesday. So it was really like yesterday. Really, you've been back about 24 hours, I think, maybe a little more. So how's it been? How, how is it integrating for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually landed around 12 a.m. today on Tuesday, uh, mm-hmm. and I ended up getting home at like 1 a.m., 1.30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, man, I, I, I can feel in, in terms of myself – Sometimes it, it leaves you without words because it's, it's hard to explain the internal change until you, you're living with it in a couple of days and you're able to visually see certain things affecting differently around you, right? So for me, personally, internally, I feel like a fucking boss, bro. Like I feel undis- indestructible, literally. And not to sound cliche or like like oh like okay this guy just went on a trip and he came back and now all of a sudden he's unstoppable and it's not even that it's just that my my perception of the world is different now you know the way that I interpret myself is different and because I interpret myself and I see myself differently I am able to live in a different world because we're living in a world of how we see it and how we see ourselves so because I see myself differently now I mean, I, a lot of things are changing, even my communication with uh, my family members and my friends and everybody else. As soon as I got back, it's very noticeable. So, I mean, from, from what they're telling me. What have me, you noticed so. that's different about your family member communication? So I went to go ahead and visit my well, mom. Well, what I went to Yes. So I went to go ahead and visit my mom because I wanted to, uh, I was going to pick up the tools and, and it was at her house. And she had a huge fucking smile on her face. And wow. I was all I was all dressed up. I was I was sharp. And she was like, wow. Like she was <laughs> she had she, her emotions was just pouring out. I was just like, wow, like, oh my God, you're back. This and that. Like she gave me a big hug. And she was very, very, very happy to see me. And I couldn't stay for much longer. I, I just had to go pick up the tools and I had to come back real quick. Uh she didn't want me to leave. She's like, oh, stay a little bit, this and that. But she was very affectionate. Like she was very happy that I was, that I was back. She was happy to see me. Uh, and yeah. it was, yeah. it was, yeah, it was very positive. The interaction that I had. So yeah. yeah. Jose's back from war. He, he came back from battle stronger, even a more of a man. Of course he was welcomed by mom for sure. Yeah, bro. And I was speaking with my brother as well. You know, uh, the interaction, uh, with my brother, you know, hey, you're back, this and that. Yeah, he was happy as well. How did it go out there? I mean, again, it's 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 hard to describe the internal change because it's internal, but it's something that as I live, they're just gonna have to see. So that's, that's did you happening. observe anything? Did was there is there anything that comes to mind like as you re-entered the world, different on the yeah. inside? Did the world behave differently? Was it anything different that you noticed? on the outside i started to become aware of the mundane routine of what other people had in place how they're living this life in a cycle i started to become more aware of that Uh, other than that i mean because I've, I've really been hanging out at, at home since I got back. I haven't, I haven't left much. Sure, sure, oh, sure. Another it has only been about, you know, less than 24 hours. Yeah. 
Yeah, I yeah. went to I went to go pick up some food. Uh huh. And <laughs> same thing, brother. I don't know what it is, but people are noticing something different about me. And I don't know if it's what I notice within myself. It must be because I went to right. this restaurant that I, I usually go to and the manager saw me. She's like, Hey, wow. How, how are you? You look so nice. This and that immediately, bro. And she usually, she says hi, but she usually doesn't like greet me like that. She like her, her emotions and, 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 and her, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's usually not like that. So like, I just started to notice everybody around me. They, right. they, they felt happier. They felt there like is. they could breathe, you know? So it was, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I started to notice around me mm -hmm. so far. That makes a lot of sense really, because it's so subtle. You don't even know how subtle, you know, your sub communication, how you enter a space, how you're smiling, how your, your pheromone, everything, your cologne, your smell, basically everything, your gait, your movement, it sub communicates, meaning it subconsciously communicates so, 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 so much, so much that you're not aware of that when you come to an event like this with a social communication master, subconscious communication master, master, way more than anybody else, you know, anybody watching way more, way, way, way more, way more. And you just naturally get changed. You've established a relationship with the guy. And so you don't really fuck with that dynamic at all. Uh, you're just here, so you behave. He's he's teacher. You treat him like teacher. Teacher teaches you things, but there's never really, you know, it's not always so specific. It's just like through stories and you just a conversation. You change through conversation. You relax into the environment. You go back to your space. You're walking different, sounding different, smiling different. Probably just holding yourself different. Like you see yourself different, so of course you're going to hold yourself different, and you just don't even know all the little nuances that change the matrix. It, it, it little zeros and ones that change the matrix around you and you just get a completely different result and it should become the new norm. So feel comfortable with it. Like, don't be looking for it to return. Look for it. Like, ah, this is how it is now. This is how it is now. Ah, this is, this is how it is now. Like that's, this is not how it is. This is out of character. Then you start to identify this is out of that character. And uh, there's benefit of like even returning and getting revamped. It not only does the vibe continue to evolve, but you uh, recalibrate, you, you, you know, you're shooting a gun. You got to sight it in often sometimes like, cause it yeah. gets knocked off the sights or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. I could say, I could, I could say, I could say a couple of things as well about, about that yeah. itself. Like yeah. when I was, when I was putting on my gear, right. Or my suit or whatever you want to call it. I felt as if I was putting on my yeah. uniform, you know, and Fuck yeah. as I was stepping out of my house, I, I begin to think of myself as well. I, Cause I just came back right from base one, four oh eight. I begin to look at myself as a warrior fighting shape shifting monk representing that that culture the values the ethics everything that i was there to uphold and learn from azd and everybody that was there i am bringing that with me home so if i'm bringing that with me home i have to have some fucking respect self-respect that's right so with that being said as i'm stepping out into the environment that's why it's so important having a group because you don't want to let down the group and it's not, it's not a peer pressure thing. It's, it's a respect thing because you've come to rely on the group and the group, you are part of the group to someone else. You are the group to someone else. So they are the group to you, but they, it's a group is not a group. It's a, a group of individuals. So, you know, yeah, you take responsibility. That's great. Just wanted yeah. to put that in there. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I was, I was being responsible for myself. And the thing is, is like you're saying, right? We, you have the group. It's there to hold you accountable. These values that you are putting in place, these are values that you want to have as an individual because it's directly aligned with the code of nature. So as I'm stepping out into the environment, I'm respecting myself by understanding who the fuck I am and understanding that I am upholding the warrior fighting shape-shifting monk culture. Let me so, ask you. Let me yeah. ask you. This is exciting. This is exciting for me because you're upholding the code, but there's a resistance to the code, it seems like. Or why, if it's so you know, aligned with nature, why 
why the group accountability? Why do you need accountability if it's aligned with nature? You should just, you don't need accountability. You're a smart guy. You just align with nature. You decide to do it. And then once you have the information, why do you need a group? So the thing is, the best way that I could describe that is as we are born into this fucking shithole, because that's what it is right now, right? <laughs> you are watching TV. You're, you're interacting with other people, other individuals that are not in tune because they've been so strayed to a different direction that is against nature. Now, why, why are there people that are speaking and, 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 and communicating on the emotional spectrum of life and just moving others away from their strength and disempower them and want them to be weaker? Because obviously they wanna take control of those other individuals' lives. So what I saw in my biggest shift and experience when I went to base 1408 is instead of saying like, oh, I'm here, I'm going to correct, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It was more of finding your own power as an individual and enhancing that, not suppressing it. Because if you look at it, when you're watching TV, when you're watching the media, when you're even certain coaches out there, right, that are preaching certain things, they always want to be the, 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 the fucking king of everything. They don't want you to ascend into levels. They want you to be at the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah. So I noticed something different where it's like, okay, everybody can be the, the fucking king of their own pyramid. Everybody has an own, their own mountain to climb. So for me as an individual, it's about climbing that mountain and understanding where I'm at in that mountain. And for me, based on the work that I've been putting for such a fucking long time, because of the, even, even for me, like certain things that I was watching, certain things that I was listening, certain people that I was interacting with, I started to notice that I wasn't, I was putting myself down or I was suppressing myself to make the other person feel more comfortable. Sure. Yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah. that's, that's what I mean by that because they want, they want to keep us weak. They want to keep us down so that they're able to handle us and manipulate us. So, so what's the solution then? So the solution What solutions is, did you find or what, what answers have you found to that? Because I agree. It's a very suppressive society. Mom and dad suppressed because they were suppressed and everybody puts each other down. And so you learn to talk by just listening to other people talk to you. And so you come to just suppress yourself, but that's an inner voice that was taken on from someone else. So it's just a whole mind fuck of a suppressive society. What's the, did you find any answers to this? Everybody's in this men and women, but differently, but the same. We're all in the same shithole, but we got our own hell, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So for, for me, the, the way that I view it, I mean, if, if I have a solution for that, I mean, to make it better, I would say, well, number one is the routines that you have in place. Because regardless of what the fuck is going on in your mind, again, if you have your values set, and that's why it's so important to find a group like this, because the values and the – and 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 the code is set by somebody that is such a well representative, right? AZD. Look at his fucking life. You just, you just look at his life. You don't have to say anything else. Just look at how he lives. And that's why I've been able to go there, actually see with my own eyes, have conversation with him and see how his lifestyle looks. And based on the values that he shares with us in the Lions Den group and everything else, we begin to understand that this is the code that we have to embody to be able to live a certain way. So, <laughs> the, the fucking chickens. <laughs> oh, it, man, and I'm pulling strikes over here, man. I knocked them both times and that's a frisbee toss with a sandal. I'm lethal. Yeah. If that was razor blade, I would I would slice someone's head off with that. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. They wow. say that the old yogis in the middle ages and before were mercenaries and they would carry these sickle, these like sickle iron, these iron sickles like around their neck, like a, like three of these things or whatever. And they would hurl them at people and it would like nearly cut a man in half. Like if it hit you. Holy fuck, dude, I believe it. <laughs> That's some next type shit. That's but, next, next level yoga. That's the next beast camp guys. We'll go over that yoga technique. You didn't, you didn't fucking teach me that bro. I was, uh, I'm over yeah. here doing this yeah. shit. Yeah. You gotta get, well, you gotta get your sun salutation <laughs> down before you can throw a sickle. You know, cut a head off. All right. Uh -oh. So, all right, let's see. So yeah, the routines. And so again, okay. So it seems like, you know, there's a code of behavior, a code that is kind of behavior code, right? That's why I named the podcast. The code of behavior that uh, 
you learn from a man who's representative of it and you go and learn his life. And then what, what, so I guess it just takes a routine and discipline to adopt the, the values and the code or uh, the accountability is so that look, because the world distracts you off of these new behaviors, cause it's, you know, they don't agree. The world doesn't have the same values and behaviors. Yeah. So the thing is, man, look, I don't have all the fucking answers, right? But there's, there's bad, we know that there's fucking bad people out here. There's sex traffickers, child, you, you, everything. We're all aware of everything that's happening right now, right? With all these fucking pedophiles running rampant. And when you look at the background behind that, the people that are running it, it, it starts, it's like, it's like a fucking seed, an evil seed that has been planted into, into planet earth, right? Ooh, about these, these got my interest now. Yeah, these specific individuals who came together and, and made a plan and said, okay, this is the seed of chaos. This seed is, is something that will take somebody's mind and make them think in a way where it would go against their survival. We have to plant this seed and keep watering no, that's it. That's the slave exactly so that's that's what's been happening and the more in tune we are with these things the more we're able to see it in a lot of celebrities right people that are just being used as puppets to to push out the message subliminally and that gets inside of people's heads even the music that we listen to everything right wow so yeah, it's very wise we, of you how old are you you're 22 years old look at you yeah i'm 22 yeah <laughs> you're saying thoughts yeah, I, so, I didn't have it 32 <laughs> yeah man so like I, I i started to see that and it didn't become that clear to me until uh i really started to 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 listen to azd and everything that he was saying and it makes sense because when i was there like it, it was it was in the back of my mind that concept was in the back of my mind however it was affecting me it was still affecting me and for whatever reason when i went there I don't know, bro. I just came back and I'm like, fuck dude. Like I'm, I'm just not, I'm not suppressed anymore. Like I'm not being fucking, I'm like a dragon breathing fire right now. Like I am not going to be stooping down on other people's fucking level just because they feel uncomfortable that there's a fucking dragon in the room. I'm not going to do that. Now, if mm -hmm. they want to learn and they want to say, okay, well this guy is maybe onto something. And the thing is, because of the group that we have is, is so powerful, right? Because when a lot of a lot of people outside of the group, they're looking in and they're they're witnessing it, but they're jealous. I see a lot of people are jealous because they wish they could have what we have. They just are not willing to put in the work. They're not willing to invest in themselves. And they just want to justify why they're in that specific position. So they never want to get in to the circle. What do you where do, where do you see this is interesting? Where are you seeing the jealous uh people do this act of jealousy so let's say for example i post a picture of all of us i haven't posted that picture yet which i'm looking to do today or maybe tomorrow the picture we took so i put that picture up right yeah, so I like that. yeah somebody comments some shit on it like oh who do you think you are now right you think you're this you're, you think you're like this or you think you're that you think you're cool now you think you're you're smart you think you're knowledgeable they they'll they'll put in the strength that they interpret you have because they don't have it. So whatever they don't have, they'll put it out there. So if they, so if it's strength that they're lacking, they'll be like, oh, you think you're strong? Or if it's confidence they're lacking, oh, you think you're confident? They'll put it out there because they're insecure about themselves. And they want to justify why they're fucking pussy and why they're not strong and why they're not confident by trying to weaken you with their communication, which cannot happen and I will not allow it to happen. So anytime that somebody throws that out there, oh, you think you're strong, oh, you think you're confident, oh, you think you have courage, like whatever it is, oh, you think you're, you're good with women, whatever the fuck it is, they're lacking in that. So they don't want you to have that. So every time mm -hmm. they're throwing that communication towards you is so you can reconsider and, and say, fuck, dude, and you could start questioning yourself and fuck yourself up, but that's not going to happen. That's how they yeah. try to suppress you, man. They, yeah. they get jealous and they say all these fucking. Oh, that's it. I agree. The suppression. The, the thing about this, the uh, 
the suppression of other people requires your agreement. Yes. The yes. suppressive communication of other people requires your agreement and you can't control other people, but can you control your own agreement? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, 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 that's, and that, that in itself right there is a relationship with yourself. And that was the biggest teaching that, that I learned from, from being there. <laughs> like it wasn't even about, you know, obviously I learned about other things through the communication that we had, but it was mostly about the relationship I had with myself because I'm over here, right? I'm like, like I mentioned, I'm 22. I've been doing pretty well in real estate, you know, in terms of accomplishments, whatever, uh, personal development, I work out, I'm in, I'm in good shape. I just started boxing, right? I, I'm a, I'm a individual who gets up and fucking gets work done every single day. However, if I don't understand who the fuck I am and what power that gives me, then I'm just as good as the elephant that's huge, but things that he can't break out of the chains because he's been in those chains for since he was little. And when he was little, he couldn't break out of them. So he's been in those chains for so long that even when he grew and got stronger, he wasn't able to break out of the chains because he was so conditioned that the chains were able to hold him down that that's, you know, that's all he could ever do. So being able to strengthen that relationship with myself and understanding that I can break out of these chains was the biggest teaching for me. That you can break out of these chains. That's, that's huge, man. And that takes self-respect. You got to really respect yourself. And you also, you got to see a lot of potential in yourself. Like you're going places and you got to be fucking intelligent because you got to see that you are suppressed. You got to be honest with yourself too, because you got to see that, man, I don't want to make it hugely successful and then work on my suppression issues because that's going to crash your business built on a bunch of lies. So you're smart enough to know, recognize that I'm doing good now, but do I have what it takes to rev me up, you know, really fast? You know, if, if I'm going real fast, moving a lot of space, moving a lot of material, you know, have a lot of currency flowing. Every little mistake makes a bigger impact. Yeah. And, you know, a little error at 400 miles an hour and the speed car, the friction of the air will throw it for a loop, but at, you know, 40 miles an hour, it doesn't do that. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So you got to be really on target when you're moving fast through the world. And so even if you don't doubt yourself, it's good to get a calibration. If you're admiring somebody that, you know, that's really good. It's cool to hear you talk about it. Well, okay. So we, we should be wrapping it up. We got a bunch of people online. If you guys, you should comment, you should ask questions. You should type something. Let, let us know your life. Even roll call. You should just roll call it. Be like, hey, I'm MC. I'm from planet Earth, from a city known <laughs> as whatever city you're from. All right. And okay, Jose, let's see. Would you do it again? Yeah, I would. I'm actually going to be coming next month. Wow. That's really good. What is there to expect on the first day? Well, St. Corey, he signed up for, to come live to this beast camp. Uh, so that's going to be different than residency. So do you want to know about the first day of residency or do you want to know about the beast camp? And yeah, the, this is really a magical place and I'm looking to unlock the magic. I'm unlocking more and more of it with my communication and it takes practice and it's very, uh, fantastic and uh, uh, it hurts a little bit on the inside. It's can I, difficult. Can I say something about Beast that? Camp. About his question? Yeah, go ahead. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a great question. And, and the thing is, is that something that I've seen, not just within myself, but everybody else that goes. And I was, even with uh, when Nico asked me a question, I forgot exactly what the question was, but it, it had to do something with, you know, what is it that fulfills you or what is it that makes you happy or whatever it is. And I said, having options and Araj had a different answer and maybe some of the other individuals had a different answer, right? Nico had, Nico's was freedom, right? There was, there was, everybody else had their own answer. So when you ask a question saying, what is there to expect on the first day, you're going to have a new experience because you're a person that is coming from a different walk of life than everybody else. So you may be receiving a message that is unique to you because that's what you need to hear. For me, it was that self-respect and that self-acknowledgement. 
and really understanding that not just not just me saying this really understanding it for myself so for you it may be something different maybe something else that you need some other battery got it cool and then logistically the beast camp uh depends if you're a resident or not residents get to work out with uh, demigod will train you and then there's a game tightening and q a so you meet all the guys and you guys talk game in the morning and then there'll probably be you know some yoga something uh mindful movement whatever shower outside you see the complex here and then like a couple two three hour lecture with a rosh in the evening um you know just getting to know everybody really it's powerful lectures when he talks and sunday is when really the explosions happen the fireworks um the real Craig, yoga, when you say it hurts, can you expand on that? I think I said that the, the fantasy and communicating it, it hurts. And it's a, a deep emotional pain. Uh, you know, seeing AZD and he demonstrates his magic, his communication. When you try to, like it, Jose was saying, JR, when you go back home, you start, you, you have the vibe imprinted on you and you start to be a loudspeaker for that you're you start emitting you're an emitter um for the vibes and it starts you know organizing <laughs> you're emitting the vibes you emitting the vibes you emit the <laughs> vibes and the world around you reorganizes to resonate and dissonate with the new vibes and uh you know so um there's pushback from that so, you know, the, the vibe of his fantastic communication, you know, when you start to communicate outside of your box of like you, the typical words you use, different words he uses, and it's not complicated words, but it's also like talking about things in a different way. Let's say, for example, I'm going to say it and you're going to think you know what I'm talking about, but it'll do something for you, but it's not the complete picture of what he did, obviously, of talking with in the watering process, think of the watering when you water the lawn as an, a communication of electricity, but it's a communication of electricity. And so if you can apply techniques of communicate, this is what he was demonstrating early on when we moved here. If you can apply the techniques of communication to the watering process, and then the analogy of that's what you do with relationships in your life. You just water the grass and eventually it grows. And, you know, some places need more water because it's more in the sun or whatever. And, you know, so the whole analogy is, it was very powerful and that's becomes my watering practice, but it was, I also have a PhD in environmental engineering. So it's like, I fucking know how to water grass. I grew up yard work. So it, the things that he's saying are contra to the science that I know. And so when I start applying it, speaking it, it hurts inside because it's like going against what a part of my mind had believed. So it's a false ego. It's like a dying of a certain part. And it's not that what I knew was wrong. It's that what I knew wasn't as right as I thought it was. And so I had bought a lie. And so adopting the new, the pain, the hurt is really the lie that I'm letting go of, uh, which is great because I'm doing it because there's an expansion. You could call it a cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, a little different, uh, something, something like that. Cognitive dissonance is when you just can't believe something. It is, it's very similar. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's the same thing. It might be, um, might be, I think a cognitive dissonance is more for something that's so shocking that it had never really been considered. And the prior evaluation was that it wasn't true, but of course it wasn't true versus I was educated on something and had a formulated belief about something that then was invalidated. So it was more like an invalidation than a, a cognitive dissonance would be like Hillary Clinton cut off somebody's face. Like, no, <laughs> I had never prior to that information been like, I bet Hillary Clinton didn't cut off anybody. Like I hadn't formed that idea. It was just not within my realm of consideration. Then when somebody throws that information at me, I have cognitive dissonance. Cause I'm like, nah, -uh. why not? Because that's just not possible. Why not? She wouldn't do that. That's cognitive dissonance. Um, so uh, were, were there any uncomfortable moments for you, Jose, while you were here? Like, yeah, anything at all? Well, one of the things that I could say, uh, and, and this is something that I, I also told Arash, like, for example, I don't look up to these gimmicky celebrities, right? These fucking artists, like all these people that, well, 
we're all artists, but like, you know, I'm, I'm talking about like the Hollywood, all these Hollywood fucking gimmicks. But I don't have a good word for it, but I, th the way that I would describe it would be like meeting Arash or, because it wasn't the first time meeting Arash, but just being around him, it's like I'm meeting somebody that those individuals will hold up to that standard. Like if, if a fucking, let's say, you know how ten, some 10 year old girls, they go crazy over Justin Bieber. Like th giving that example, like, oh shit, like this, this, that. Uh -huh. Like that's, that's, what I, that's what I mean. Like in terms of seeing Arash, like these are the people that are important to me, right? So when I, was, uh, when I was just in the kitchen having conversation with him and everything, I mean, I did feel a little bit, it was, I don't want to say uncomfortable, but it was more of a vibe where I knew there was a very fucking strong man standing next to me and I was communicating and I had the, I had the fucking uh, privilege to communicate with him. Right. So it was that. And I knew that the standards that I was around was like, okay, these are like very powerful individuals. Everybody there, even you, Yogi, Chris, Sultan Fernando, like everybody that was in the environment, and I felt good because the first, the first day, the second day, it was kind of like, okay, I was, I was getting used to it, used to the vibe, right? Used to the vibe. Uh, and then the third day, fourth day, fifth day, uh, it was just like, like, this is like, fuck yeah, what's up, bro? Like it was, it was, you know, it was very comfortable for me. Everything was smooth because I was able to adapt to that environment very fucking easily because of the yeah. work that I've been putting in, not because I'm just a fucking nobody walking in there, right? I've been able to apply the, the teachings that I was learning from Arash before going there. So that's why it became a little bit more easy for me, I would say. For sure, for sure. I mean, you're coming and tuning the instrument. When you start to tune up the guitar strings, it gets tight. And every now and then I'll be thinking like, I hope it doesn't pop, you know, because you're manipulating the metal. But when you get there, it's like, oh, it was worth it. So some people... I mean, it's a weird analogy. I mean, nobody really snaps. Nobody's come kind of here and snapped. But like, there are people that have done boot camps. Like, you might have been here when we were handing, uh, handling Jaden. Jaden came to a boot camp, so that's somebody that got tuned yes. and then snapped. You know, and there's a few guys like that. But uh, over a hundred guys on the beast camps, and two guys, and really only one. The other one is just uh, figuring it all out. You know. Um, anyway. That's uh, it for now. I don't see any other comments. It's great having the live audience. Thanks, everybody. I'm Shadow Band, so share this. If you know somebody that would be interested, if you know someone in real estate that wants to come see AZD, here's Young Buck, fucking Jose Rodriguez, that came here for the uh, you know first time here at Base One, and you know given a real honest appraisal of his experience and some realtors. It has this? I mean, you haven't gotten back into your real estate business, so we can check back in in the future. Um, really. Were there any shifts in regards to realty that you would want to share? Well, first of all, I'd like to comment on your word appraisal. That was a cool word to use because we use that word all the time in real estate. Uh, appraisal, like appraising the house. That, that, was, that was cool. Uh, so any, anything that I would say in regards to real estate, yeah. I actually, I made a, a, a one-minute video that uh, I'm going to be putting out and because I'm, I'm recruiting an agent to join my team. So it, it's motivated me to pursue that a lot more because I'm in the position to train somebody to fucking help them level up and grow my business and they could grow their own business too. But in terms of somebody that's coming in and getting a license, right? Again, my second year, I did over six figures and I, I was rookie of the year. I was only 20 years old at the time, 2021, 20, maybe. So I've, I've done pretty good for myself. So I've, I've now I'm in the position again, because I'm understanding now what the fuck I'm capable of in my power. Cause I was, I, I, I had that as an idea, but I was always, I just wasn't like, ah, I don't know, maybe next month, maybe next week. But now I already made the video. I'm going to put it up, uh, upload it tomorrow. So you guys will see it, but I'm recruiting for the, for the REJ team, which is my real estate team. I'm going to grow that a little bit more nice. so that, uh, yeah, I could, I could just, at the end of the day, bro, I want to, I want to water that seed. I want to water that plant yeah. and, and put somebody in position to fucking run that shit because uh, I don't see myself running that for, you know, for the rest of my life at all, at all. There you go. So, yeah, so that's, Ascending. that's one. And then in my, in my, yeah, in my investments, I mean, I'm just going to keep fucking growing with that. Yeah that's, yeah, yeah. that's pretty much it, man. For sure. Well, definitely excited and, and tuned up, revved up, ready to go. And that's exciting. So we'll be seeing you in a month. 
and there'll be some great, fantastic war stories from your conquests back home. Uh, the warrior fighting, shape-shifting monk, Jose Rodriguez. You can find him on Instagram, real estate Jose, one word. And if you're catching this, subscribe, share it, and we'll catch you. If you're interested in the beast camp, go to ninthlimb.com. You'll see the temple at the top. You go to that page, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, os. Os. <laughs>